In this video, we'll be providing a brief introduction to Keylime and then performing a demonstration of Keylime protecting a NetCD three node cluster. Let's start off with a simple overview of what Keylime is and what Keylime achieves. Keylime is an open source project that provides remote attestation based on a hardware root of trust by means of a trusted platform module. With Keylime, our aim is to make TPMs easy to use. Keylime manages the complexities of communicating with a TPM and you, the user, develop your own custom actions executed by Keylime based on the trust or non-trust of a machine. For those of you new to TPMs, a TPM or trusted platform module to use its full name is a cryptographic engine that is situated in a dedicated chip on a machine's made board. TPMs are almost ubiquitous and available out of the box with most servers, laptops, IoT and edge devices. If not already available out of the box, they are very simple and cheap to retrofit. Keyline can perform a trusted boot verification of a UEFI based device, for example the firmware, bootloader, secure boot, the kernel, its modules and init RAMFS. Using IMA, Integrity Measurement Architecture, established in the main Linux kernel since release 2.6, Keylime can monitor the runtime environment as scripts and binaries make various system calls into the kernel. Each time a syscall is made, IMA makes a cryptographic hash of the object, which Keylime then compares to a whitelist that represents an expected and trusted system state. Keylime can also measure any PCR nominated by the user. The target environments for Keylime are Cloud, Edge and IoT. It is particularly useful for establishing the trust state of a node not within your physical trust boundaries. For example, when we instantiate a virtual machine on a cloud provider's infrastructure, we lack a credible means to be certain of no compromise to the lower levels of the stack. For example, the firmware, bootloader, host operating system and hypervisor. Keylime is also well suited to establish trust on machines in remote locations that are prone to tampering, such as an IoT 5G edge device deployed in a public open area. Keylime supports both x86 and ARM and has no special requirements beyond the form mentioned trusted platform module. Let's explore each of these services provided by Keylime, the Keylime agent, verifier, registrar and tenant. In this architectural overview, we have divided everything into two segments. The left hand side is the node that we wish to measure for trust. To the right is the management or on-premise network where we run Keylime's core tenant services. The first service we will discuss is the Keylime verifier to our top right. The verifier, as its name suggests, verifies the trust state of a machine by processing the cryptographic measurements gathered by the Keylime agent from the machine's trusted platform module. The Keylime agent, situated top left, communicates directly with the TPM. It requests measurements using a call termed a TPM quote. The TPM quote is then remotely checked by the verifier to ensure it is based on a cryptographic hardware root of trust. The next component is the Keylime registrar. Think of this as a database to store the state of agents and a certificate store for public keys, typically intermediate certificates provided by the TPM vendors. When a hardware root of trust is initiated, the verifier will call the register to check that a TPM's provided entity key is signed by a TPM manufacturer. This allows Keylime to be sure that it's talking to a real hardware TPM and not a spoofed actor masquerading as a TPM. No secret materials are stored within the register. Next, we have Keylime's revocation service. The revocation service is a framework of actions that can be taken should a node fail its integrity and suggest compromise or tampering. The revocation service allows the user to assign scripts that are triggered locally on each monitored node when the verifier sends out a cryptographically signed revocation event. These are Python scripts and so can carry out any action that is programmatically possible. For example, the machines could shut down VPN connections to the failed node or remove the failed node from the SSH authorized key files. The scripts could also integrate with third party services, such as making a specific API call, which in turn could be used to inform sysadmins of the compromise or carry out specific automation tasks to ring fence the failed node. Today, we will be using the revocation service to remove a compromised node from an etcd cluster. Last of all, we have the Keylime CA. This is not as such a full certificate authority, but a framework to allow Keylime to integrate with a CA. Within this demo, we will use CFSSL or Cloudflare SSL to use its full name. We will create various certificates and keys within CFSSL. And when the machine fails, we will revoke its certificate. An example scenario here could be to revoke a machine's TLS certificates, thereby marking any connections to that machine as untrusted. Let's take a look at today's demo layout. We will have three machines as part of an etcd cluster with each machine running the Keylime agent. First, we will perform a nefarious action on etcd node 2. In this case, we will run a non-whitelisted script as root. Doing this will cause a system call into the kernel, which will result in the Linux subsystem IMA measuring the script and recording its hash into the TPM using a method we refer to as an extend, which is a one-way hash function. 
the non-whitelisted unauthorized script execution will cause the Keyline verifier to send out a revocation event to all machines being monitored by Keyline. The revocation event is cryptographically signed by the verifier so we can ensure it is a verifier we trust and not a rogue imposter. The revocation event contains metadata and a list of actions that the remaining non-compromised nodes should execute locally. As said before, these actions are scriptable, thereby providing an open framework for the user to develop their own required actions. In this example, we will request the etcd cluster leader to remove the failed node from the cluster. So our demo steps will be establish a hardware root of trust, perform a cryptographic measurement of the node's current state. Only when a machine proves its trust will we release an encrypted payload on the target node. For the demo, we will copy in some SSH keys using an auto run script. This shell script could deploy an entire application or be a hook to call an Ansible playbook. As said, it's a script, so it's up to the user's imagination as to what it should programmatically automate. Last of all, we will run an unauthorized shell script which will cause the machine to fail its runtime attestation. This will result in the removal of the failed machine from the etcd cluster. For this demo, we will use four virtual machines running Fedora 31. Three of the machines will run the Keylime agent and the etcd service. They will all be part of the same etcd cluster. The fourth machine will run the Keylime verifier, register and revocation service. Each one of these machines were provisioned and set up using an Ansible role the Keylime team has developed and made available. Using this role will simplify replicating this setup should you wish to try out Keylime yourself. You will find the links to the Ansible role, IMA setup and further examples to use in Keylime to manage and revoke IPsec connections. Let's get started with our Keylime demo. The three terminals to our left are the etcd cluster members, etcd1, etcd2 and etcd3. To the right we have four terminals that will be used to run the Keylime verifier, register, a CA revocation service and a terminal to run the Keylime tenant CLI application that is required to provision each node into establishing a hardware root of trust and a continuous monitoring state. We will now run some etcd ctl commands on etcd3, which is the current leader in the etcd cluster. The results show that all three machines are enrolled in the cluster and of a healthy state. Let's also take a look inside the SSH folder, which as we can see is currently empty, apart from the standard known hosts and authorized key files. We will now move on to the keyline management node on our top right. Let's inspect the payload directory that will be encrypted and transferred to each node once they pass attestation and prove they're in the expected state by the Keyline verifier. The four files consist of an action list, which is a simple white space separated list of revocation scripts, which we will run upon node attestation failure. Each file in the action list is required to be prefixed with local underscore action. We then have the auto run.sh script, which will be executed when the payload is unzipped on the target machines. The auto run script here copies in two payload SSH keys. This explains earlier why we viewed the SSH directory on the node at CD3. Last of all is our local collection script which Keyline will execute as part of the revocation service. This particular script will pass the failed node's hostname from the revocation event metadata, perform a lookup for the node's cluster member ID and then remove the member from the cluster using the etcd ctl application. The revocation service will also delete the SSH payload keys. Last of all for the verifier we have three whitelists for each node. Whitelists consist of a SHA-256 hash and a POSIX path to a file. Consider this a golden list of file states which we expect to find on the target system. These hashes are compared with the cryptographic hash measurements remotely gathered by the TPM on the target node. Let's start the Keyline Verify and note the last line states that the revocation service is also running. And let's start the Keyline Register. Now we will start the Keylime agent on each of the etcd cluster nodes. We should also note that while the machines are now in a registered state, they are still yet to prove their trust with a complete measurement of the system. We will do this now using the Keylime tenant command. The various arguments here are minus V for the verifier IP. We are working over localhost here, but you could easily run the tenant application from its own machine. We then have minus T for the target node, in this case etcd1, with the target port, U for UUID, this can be automatically generated by Keyline, however we will use a simple UUID of the host name to make it easier to follow the demo. We will then point to a location to create some certificates used to bootstrap the machine, the payload directory, the whitelist, an excludes list which provides a list of files we wish to ignore, an example here could be a temp directory. Last of all we have our minus C for the command, which in our case is add. Let's walk through this and pause the video when necessary. First, we provide a password used for generating our key store. Keylime then performs an initial check of the node's integrity. 
This passes and so the agent is allowed to decrypt, unzip the payload and the autorun.sh script is executed and our payload SSH keys are copied into the .ssh directory. The node now also enters continuous integrity polling to monitor the run state using IMA. Now we will provision in the same manner etcd2 and etcd3. While the following commands are running, I'd like to make a note that the Keyline Tenant CLI application that you see here is in fact calling existing REST APIs in both the Verifier and the Register, thus allowing third parties to integrate with Keyline's APIs. Let's also start the CA revocation service that will allow us to revoke the certificates of a failed node. We will now move to a second set of terminals. Let's take a look inside the SSH directory. We can now see that our payload SSH keys have been securely delivered to the etcd cluster nodes. We are now ready to simulate a compromise and run our non-whitelisted script as root on etcd2. This in turn will trigger a remote attestation failure on the Keyline verifier. The verifier will then send a revocation event and the remaining nodes etcd1 and etcd3 will wipe the payload SSH keys we provisioned and etcd3 will remove the now compromised etcd2 node from the etcd cluster. Almost immediately, we can see the verify sends the running of a non-approved script. It sends out a revocation event and changes the operational state of the agent to failed. We can also see the CA revocation take place. Last of all, let's come back to etcd3 on our other set of terminals. First, we can inspect the SSH directory and we can see that the SSH keys have been securely wiped from the system. We can also view the cluster status and see the failed machine has been removed and only two machines remain, etcd1 and etcd3. Should you be interested in learning more about Keylime as a user or contributing to the project, we recommend that you visit our website keylime.dev, which will steer you towards our GitHub organization, our documentation, and details of how to contact the development team. Thank you for watching.